do you really need a waterproof pannier for your bicycle? As you can see, it's a pretty beautiful day here, but it's winter and there's no rain to be seen. So we're gonna do these experiments inside. <laughs> we're done with the kid. <laughs> Where you don't have to get wet and cold outside. <sighs> yup. Here's a fact. Most people don't need 100% waterproof bike bags or panniers because most people don't bike in torrential downpours. But even if you do get caught in the rain once in a while, there's no meaningful amount of water that ever gets into a normal, breathable bicycle pannier. If you don't believe that, well, this is what this video is for. We're gonna do a few experiments today and we're gonna put these non-waterproof panniers to the test. For both torture tests, I'm going to use three entirely different types of panniers, all of different ages, from eight years old to a brand new one. In the first test, I'm gonna fill each of the bags up with water, weigh them as an additional data point, and then see how much water actually leaks out of them and how quickly. In the second test, I'm gonna subject each bag to a four minute torrential downpour simulation. So what I'm doing right now is making three duplicate cardboard laptops and phones so that we can see what the damage is after each of these four minute extreme condition tests are done. Obviously the second experiment is a bit more in line with what you'd actually be doing with a bag because normally you don't fill a bag up with water and then ride around town with it. But screw it, let's do it. I'm going to put one cardboard phone and tablet in each pannier. I needed something to put the panniers on so I cut a piece of wood up. I made sure each of these panniers were bone dry. Then I secured them, and then I mounted each of them onto this makeshift board thing. And then, for each one, I started a stopwatch. I turned on the tap and started spraying. I tried to be really even on all of these, doing the left and the right, the front and back, kind of under replicating the spray from the front wheel going back to the panniers, and from the top, emulating rain that's just dead set on trying to get into the pannier. Finally, I stopped after about four minutes. So, the outside is pretty saturated. I'm gonna take the phone out of the top compartment here. The phone itself is totally dry. Now for the laptop. Had a little bit of water here. So it got a little bit here, but this is also when I opened it up. I think that was that drop. This pocket out here, filled with water, and it's, it's retaining water. So I'm gonna just dump that that way so I don't get it on the inside. So the bottom of the phone got wet here. And now for this. The bottom here, just like the last one, has a bit of moisture. So a little bit of water buildup right there. Okay, just like the other ones, really just this bottom corner right here got a little bit wet. Now I left this at the bottom here. It accidentally was sitting in the water. So it was face down like this. Okay, so at first glance, after running those experiments, these waterproof bags looking pretty good because everything in the breathable bags that we just tested got wet, at least just slightly. But I beg to differ, give me a minute and I will explain. We're gonna go over the negatives of the waterproof bags right now and we'll get back to the solutions in just a moment. First up is the amount of selection. There's a lot less selection and options for waterproof bags than there are for breathable bags. Going off of that, we have number two, which is the cost of them. They're really expensive. Number three is if anything that is damp goes into your waterproof pannier, you're screwed because everything else is going to get damp as well because evaporation happens and there's no way for the water to get out of that watertight bag. Think of it like a, a Ziploc. And number four, pockets. There are a lack of pockets on waterproof bags because of the materials that they use. Oh, and if you need something at the very bottom of your pannier, good luck getting to it when it's full. So in these experiments, we're dealing with moisture buildup at the bottoms of the panniers because we have been exposing these panniers to torrential downpours that are consistent in one spot, if that was on the entire bike and you were biking in it, would you be biking in that without seeking shelter? Let's ask a real question here. I can't be late for this appointment and I have to ride in that rain. I would be forced to do it. What would I do to protect my laptop and my phone? Well, first of all, for my phone, I would just put it in my pocket. I've done that several times. Um, for the laptop, I would just double bag it with grocery bags. It's not that hard, and there wasn't a lot of moisture inside those bags anyways, so I don't care if you have a $10,000 MacBook or something like that, you're probably fine. I have another solution for you too. Simply 
avoid the rain. Chill for 30 minutes at that location. Most of the time, at least in southwestern Ontario here in Canada, our rain goes in spurts. So we have a rainy day, but really it's pretty light rain. And then maybe there's a deluge of water. It's perfect, either you're inside and you're like, oh, I should probably not go outside yet. Uh, and then you just chill, slow down a little bit. You don't have to get there immediately. Worst case, really worst case, I don't know, leave your bike at that location and take a cab that day. Okay, with all of that downloaded into your brain, I just wanna leave you with this. Unless you need waterproof panniers for a very specific purpose, your money is better spent elsewhere. They're meant to carry things, most material has kind of wicking capabilities, and most panniers are not gonna be advertised as waterproof because they don't need to be. If you are interested in getting a pannier, whether it's waterproof or not, you can check out Vincita. They are the ones who sent me this bag for free to have in a video. I don't know if this is what they intended, was for me to like basically destroy a bag, fill it with water, and then pummel it with water, and then use it a bunch and use it like it's intended. It's very muddy right now. It is no longer the nice clean bag that they gave me. And that's good because I'm all about actually using products that are meant to be used. I don't want things just sitting hidden and like immaculate. What, what is the point of that? Get things that are good quality. And this is pretty hefty. I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. So if you want something from Vincita, check out the description below. I'll have all the information for 10% off of your order of any Vincita products. So uh, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like the video. I put a lot of time into those experiments and this took me a few days to film and also figure out how to even prove to you that you don't need waterproof bags. So uh, yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, do all of that stuff. Uh, if you do comment, I most likely will get back to you. I'm not a big channel yet, so I respond to pretty much every comment.